18 years old, and they're all eager. These kids want to be the leaders of our, our communities, our businesses, the future, and be able to share that with some of our experience with these kids was amazing. So I was I was really impressed. As you look at the list of speakers, I think we were the large majority of where they got their speaking base from. So it was a great opportunity. When it comes back in September, is that what, November, I believe it is. You guys have a topic that you think you want to share with the young people? Oh, this is a great place to take it out there and have a blast. So just want to think about that. Also, January 18th, we are hosting the district officer training again. Yay! This so rock. We are. They, they look so much right here, guys. It's, 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 it's just, they, every time they come over, they go, "Wow, where'd you get all these great people?" It's just, it's just amazing. So I'm gonna again ask you guys to step up and greet and be a part of it. We need to have every one of our officers there. So those of you that are taking on the new roles, you need to be there. You need to be there. And also, those of you who would like to get involved in the officer roles, this is a really great place to learn and see how the, the gears, the mechanics of one of these clubs works. So even though you're not an officer or going to be an officer, stand there, step up in there, because there's always a lot of good communication and networking going on. So that's January 18th, 10 o'clock to noon here. And we'll be meeting over in the youth room. Just we'll keep reminding you guys about that. When was that? January 18th. That's a Saturday. Why isn't anybody writing that down? Officer training. Officer training. How many of you guys are going to be new officers? No. No. So say in 18th, 10 to noon. 10 to noon. Mm -hmm. All right. And do we have uh, any volunteers to help with check-in, run errands? I'll be there. Yeah. Sweet. Raise your hand. going to be there. Officers, you have to be there. Past officers, you should be there. Okay. Let's keep it full. Perfect. Okay. So, and Max, you're going to be an officer, so you'll be there as well, right? Yeah, I'm just looking at my calendar. I'm, put, put, I'm putting it in. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, look through that. Okay. Yeah, around that time, but I think not too important. Alrighty, let's get busy with the meeting. Our listener of the day, who would like to be the listener? What are all the positions open? I will tell you. I will so tell you as we go. Do you mind if uh, I timer? Go I need a timer. Timer, go timer, timer. Hey, go partner. Okay. Just next to it. Can I tell you what I've got? Oh. Okay, Kelly, are you still scheduled to speak? Um, no, I did not prepare a speech, so Frank's going to take my place. Okay. Bill, not here. Steve, you're still speaking. Perfect. We'll just keep it. Anybody want to jump in for a short speech? Dave. Yeah. Well, you've already took Kevin's. Oh, okay. Jump in twice. Yeah. yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. We're not. We got Frank and two others need three. That's okay. We'll just take two. We won't get two. Oh, we won't get two. said it all last night. She said. Oh, okay. 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 General evaluator, Jackie, you ready to go? Perfect. Dave, are you going to be evaluator number one? Sure. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Leslie's not here. Frank, you got yourself down. Huh? So Leslie can be the um, evaluator number two. That takes care of evaluators. You just love to run. I just died. You can't stop. You can't stop. Yeah, you can't stop. God loves you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. So, are you ready? Any people? All the. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Who would like to be for Marion? Yay! Wow. Put that down. I know, it's only because I'm using it. Okay. Uh, who would like to be a master? A master? Point one? Okay. Two. A master. Listener? Okay, thank you. Vote counter? Vote counter. Yay, Max is going in for vote counter. Is that person? Timer? 
Thank you. Got it. All right. Who is hey, Miss Jackie? Are you doing me a favor? Do you have an extra piece of paper? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, just write down everybody who has a role for me today. I've got the speakers. I've got pictures of Mary. Who's doing this? Yeah. Okay. So she is off. Yeah. She is the timer. Yep. Who's count the votes? Who's vote counter? Max. 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 Okay, who am I I've got the two evaluators and two speakers. Alright, so who's the grammarian? Okay, who's the awe master? Who's the listener? Kelly. Kelly. Okay. What? <laughs> and you got both counter, right? What are my favorite topics? That's what you listen to. I, I, I don't know how to listen, but I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, table topic? Good. Who's who? Table topic master? Nobody's that. Can I do that instead? Yes. Or I'll do both. No, there was a picture. Oh, I, can't. I can't. I can't. Tell me what to do. If there's nobody, I'll do it. Unless Dave wants to. Dave's yeah, gonna tell you which Dave looks like he wants to. Talk to the master? No, we don't have one. Do we need to talk to the master? I volunteer, Dave, unless somebody else wants to do it. Okay, no, you're good. But if you want someone else to do it. Yeah, I'll that's good. I'll take you. Off. I pick you. I choose you. What? I choose you. You're good. All right. Are all the roles filled? Awesome. All right. So by the standard time, we're running. We're almost on time. Okay. Word of the day. Word of the day. You want to help with word of the day? It's the grammarian. Who's the grammarian? Vicky is. Oh, well, I just became the grammarian. But, Vicki, you love words. Oh. Delicious. 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 It's a new year. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. Well, and you don't want something obvious like, um, what's that thing that you do over the new year? Resolve. How about, how about rectitude? What's the definition? Uh, moral uprightness. Rectitude? To be erect. Rectitude, R E C T I T U D E. Rectitude, and it's a. Uh, Moral yeah. uprightness. Uprightness? Moral. Moral Max. uprightness. Yeah. Rectitude. That's it. All right. All right, everybody got the word of the day? Word of the day is done. Cut that off. All right, so I'm the Toastmaster, and we've now fulfilled all the rules, and God bless you, Scott. Who's going to go first? Rectitude. Strength or Scott? I should straight. I'm OCD. Let's let Steve go, Paul. He's got his thing loaded. So that I clear one, so it don't die. Yes. Everyone talk loud because I'm half deaf today. Yes, ma'am. All right, so I know that you sent me your speech thing, but I cannot remember the title. It is a. 8 to 10 minute timer. 10 to 12. 10 to 12. 10 to 12. And do you have your PowerPoint ready to go? I do. Are you ready to bring? Oh, let's welcome Scott to the stage. My challenge today is to present a technical paper for all of you. Now, you're supposed to be representatives of the community I would present this to. So uh, the, the, the speech or the, the paper that I've chosen to present is implementing a multi-geophysical survey to locate Cleopatra at the tomb of Tapo Cyrus Magna. Now the fact that you guys didn't all get really excited means you guys aren't keeping up with your archaeological research <laughs> because this is an exciting dig that's been going on for the last several years. At the bottom of it is a question that's plagued archaeology since its very beginning, 200 years ago. Whatever happened to Cleopatra? Now, we all remember she famously committed suicide after that whole debacle with Mark Antony and, and the Battle at Antium. 
but then she completely disappears from history. There's no record of what happened to her. And that's particularly astounding if you really think about how much research, how much information we really have about Rome at this point. We have books we have that were written during the period. We have uh, bills of lading. We have uh, survey or salary information. We have people writing each other. And yet Cleopatra, one of the no most notorious women of the era, Nothing. Now the reasons often cited for that is that uh, the winner of that battle, Octavian, said to the Egyptians, you can have Cleopatra, you can have Mark Antony, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Just go away. Um, the Romans who then came to occupy Alexandria uh, and the Byzantines after them completely wanted to suppress the Egyptian culture. So within 500 years, no one could even read the language anymore. It was suppressed to that level. And finally, and this has been considered one of the primary issues, has been there was an earthquake in 365 which demolished a lot of Alexandria, and there was two other earthquakes that followed up that did the same. Now, just as a matter of catching you up, just talk about the timeline that is involved here for the moment. Uh, Egypt has really was really past its prime when Alexander the Great came by in 334 BC, and like he did in other places, he set up a ruler, in this case a friend of his from school, Ptolemy, to run the place, leaving him with the Two things that he wanted the capital city named after him, so Alexandria was created, and B, that Ptolemy was supposed to uh, adopt the culture, adopt the religion, and work his way into the community, not be a mean ruler. So the Ptolemy dynasty was created and lasted for 300 years, and Cleopatra represents the end of the Ptolemy dynasty. So this period most importantly, was Egypt was ruled by Greeks. Uh, the Romans then ruled for about 300 years, and as Rome was falling, the Christian church took over, and the Christian church split into two uh, groups, about 300 AD, and the Eastern church, which we think of as the Greek Orthodox, uh, took over Egypt at that point. Alexandria at the time looked like this. Um, this is the famous lighthouse that was one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, Cleopatra had her palace out in the bay on this island. And uh, Mark Antony set up over here when he was living there as did Caesar. And this became where the Romans made their garrison going forward. And back here, that's the famous library that had all of the knowledge of the known world at the time. Today, Alexandria looks like this. And from this angle, you can see sort of that old structure, but it's all fallen into the bay because of those earthquakes. The, the, for the last hundred years since we've been able to dive on these things, we found a tremendous trove of things that have fallen into the bay and are sitting there, but we found no tomb or no structure that represented a tomb in all of that. Now, in the current era, you've probably seen this guy. This is Dr. Hawass. He's the director of antiquities in Egypt. He's led the charge of trying to make a modern archaeological dig in Egypt, and um, in doing that, he surveyed all of these cities that we'd never looked before, and he came across Taposiris Magna. Now, Taposiris Magna wasn't considered active during this period, but indeed it was, and they've actually found, these are, are Cleopatra's coins that were issued during her reign. Um, this is considered Mark Antony's face, and this, uh, at the bottom here, is uh, Ptolemy VII, which is Cleopatra's father. 
So there was a Greek community active, although history doesn't record that, in this particular city, which is about 30 miles away from Alexandria. And they were Greeks. This is the Greek way of burying, and they had skeletons, not mummies. And such that the original survey found the outlying catacombs, all of the faces were pointed towards the center, which is a Greek way, it happens in other Greek catacombs, and there's something in the middle that is of particular honor, and thus you face the center of the area. Now, it makes sense that if uh, Cleopatra's palace were here and the Romans were here, that, that they wouldn't want to bury her there because the Romans would have observed it and we would have had some history of it. It makes more sense that they carried her body down to where Tapo Cyrus Magnum is. A Greek community lasted for some time and then died off. So it makes sense that the next thing we do is we look for geophysical evidence of things that are buried. And thus, the paper that we're talking about has been created. Um, we're going to use very low frequency electromagnetic soundings. And that's that device over there. We sound each location, and we put it on a grid, and we create a map. Um, and we would, and it was funded that we do this whole temple area. Um, this map then goes to the temple area. It also sounds some of those catacombs that we know to exist, some caves that we know to exist, to give us some reference points. And that computer-generated map looks like this. This is the entire temple area. And what you see are reflections of things under the ground. Um, this particular hot spot is very active, and they decided to dig there, and they found that it was basically something that was dug up and reburied, that it's a, it was an open pit at one point. But if you go further down, if you go down 20 meters, you get this hole right here. And this is about 20 by 30 meter chamber, and there are what appear to be catacombs and caves that connect to it. And so it truly appears that there is a, a burial site in the middle of the temple that was dug in under there, and that's potentially it. So the conclusion of this particular paper is that there is what, what appears to be a, a tomb in the southwest corner buried under the temple. Uh, and there appear to be openings to it from several points, and uh, future excavation is warranted. So uh, that's the nature of the paper. It was presented about two years ago. What's my time? I, I usually go long. So, um, so anyway. Uh, it's warranted that we do a dig, but as you know, the political situation in Egypt has prevented digs for the last two or three years and may for some time further. So uh, when we get back to digging in Egypt, possibly the biggest find of the 21st century will be an intact tomb again, much like Tutankhamun's intact tomb 100 years ago, an intact tomb that really has all the stuff in it that was meant to be in it that is Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And so we're all looking forward to when things settle down and, and we can get back to this particular project. So I'm, I'm up to any questions you might have. This is sort of a seminar type thing. Yeah, go ahead. Will you be there when they dig? I'd love to be. As a matter of fact, I, I got on the email of Dr. Mawas, and he's inviting me to go in February, which he keeps telling me it's safe, but I'm not going to make that one. <laughs> Anything else? Well, great. Thank you for your time.
don't know about you guys, but I always learn something. Something I didn't know that I didn't know. When Steve, not Scott, gets up to talk. All right. Let's welcome our next speaker, Frank. I do need an evaluator. Do we have an evaluator? We do. Actually, you know what, let's do this is a speech that I'm putting together for the speech contest that's coming up in the spring. And I just started working on this yesterday. I've had the thought in mind of what I wanted to do with the speech. So possibly you could do a round robin and help me put this together, like you did with my Dirty Dan the story. Great. Why don't you tell the timer how long this speech is? This is going to be probably five to seven minutes. It's not a real long presentation. Five to seven. Five to seven minutes. I just got to get organized here a little bit. Great. For an educational moment, why don't you tell us when the speech contest is and which one it is? I'm not sure when the contest is unless you know it. Yeah, the spring contest is usually about May, but we'll probably be doing our presentations in about April. So we will. I gotta get myself organized here for just a second. Okay. Character. It's often been said that Frank is a real character. I think we would all agree with that. I am a character. That's not the type of character that I'm talking about. When we think of character in leadership, what do you, what's the thing that goes through your mind? You think of great leaders, what was their character? Steve mentioned a lot of leaders in Roman times and Greek times. You had people like Alexander the Great, you had the Caesars, all those folks had different character. But today, character is a attribute that we don't see a lot in our political arenas, in our business communities, in our local communities. We don't see a lot of character. According to Webster, character is defined as an aggregate of features and traits that form the individual nature of some person or thing, kind of what it looks like. Abraham Lincoln said that character is like a tree and reputation is like a shadow. A shadow that is, the shadow that is the reputation is what we think of. The tree is the real deal. Let me try to sum this up in a story because I love stories so much. Sam was a master carpenter and he had worked for Mr. John for nearly 50 years. And when Sam announced that he wanted to retire, Mr. John very generously told him how much he appreciated Sam's work and he wrote him a check for $5,000 as a severance point after 50 years. But he says, Sam, I'd like for you to build me one more house, please. And Sam was known for the quality of his workmanship and how much he cared for every building that he put up, beautiful homes. And John said that, Mr. John said he wanted to put this particular home on a very spectacular lot. It had an incredible view. This was going to be a magnificent house. Well, Sam was pretty upset with just the measly $5,000 that he invested for 50 years with Mr. John's. But it was his last project, and he thought maybe with that little bit of money he could make him built himself a small cottage, and that uh, he would go ahead and build the dream house. Although Sam did pride himself in his character and his reputation was such that he was known for incredible skills. He could build stuff that no one else could. The quality was magnificent. He tended to start cutting corners, and he began to allow the other workers to do things that would compromise the quality of this house. He started using secondhand materials, he started putting in the inferior products, and he would look the other way when somebody else would make a mistake. Well, when the house was finished, 
Mr. Sam and Mr. Johns came over to Sam and said, Sam, I really appreciate everything that you've done for me, and I'd like to give you a little thank you card for all my appreciation. And he handed him an envelope. Sam opened up the envelope, and he says, what's this? He says, this is Grant B to that beautiful home that you just built. And by the way, here's the key to that beautiful home that you built for me. Sam looks at it and he says, well, it has my name on it. He says, yes, it does. Because I appreciate everything that you've done for me over the past 50 years. Sam was ashamed of how he had misjudged his old friend. He betrayed his own values. He betrayed his own character. Now he was going to have to live in that house that he had built so carelessly. More importantly about character is, is that what is our character like when no one's watching us? The things that we do when no one's got an eye on us or that we're going to be in view of what we do and what we say and what we think. What about that part of our character, the way we think? I like the way baseball coach John Wooden said this. He says, be more concerned with your character than your reputation. He says, because your character is who you really are. And your reputation is merely what others think about you. So the question is, is how do we develop character? We all think we have some kind of character. And I thought about this last night when I was putting this together, and I thought there's got to be a simple design or map that was given to us to develop the quality and the character we should have with our fellow human beings. You know what I came up with? The Ten Commandments. You think of a simple, basic, premise of how we develop character. I am thy Lord, and thou shalt have no other God before me. Do not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear fault witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet. Wow. I mean, that's, there's some bullet points to work from right there. If we follow just the Ten Commandments in our life, I think we could develop character. I'm going to sum it up. Some words from a man named Mr. Mr. Frank Outlaw. What a name, Frank Outlaw. Catch on to this, guys. Watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your habits. And watch your habits because they become character. And watch your character because that becomes your destiny. Character matters. Thank you. Hey, Frank, so did you want to go right into Ray Robin? Yeah. Perfect. And, you know, don't want to take a whole lot of time on it, but that yeah. was my first thrust with that presentation. We can take five minutes to do Grand Robin before we head into some topics. Number one, the only thing I would say is when you, when Sam gets the house and he knows he has to live in there, there should have been some character dialogue or some character sadness. He just, he just said, oh, I need to live there forever. It's like it wasn't the point. Know, the exclamation point at the end of the story. There wasn't a big, it doesn't have to be dramatic, but it was, you know, he cut all those corners and he kind of painted that picture, but then it was just like, oh, and he has to live there. Just kind of ended. But what got my attention in that, during that story is when you said that when you got to that point, and, and the keys and the D. Yeah, that was good. And then he said, he, and then you said he was ashamed. 
Yeah, I, just I, think, I think I know where Ken is going with that. It could be a, a bit more on that point. I think I tried to say that was a reflection of his character went against his character. Yeah, I mean, just an explanation point. And then, you know, oh, I know you're still practicing this, but remember the hologram scenario? In when we went to our speech the event in August? Yeah. The hologram scenario where you build a great house over here, but you maybe cut back on that one and you paint sections of the stage instead of just standing up front. Okay. Well, part of this, too, I, I haven't had time to really memorize this speech, so I had to stay real close to my notes. Okay, got it. Yeah. I'm just giving you a round of I absolutely love the D. You know, I mean, I put D on there, and the key, you can make a bigger, you know, jingle key. be awesome. I think what Tan is talking about there is in storytelling or a presentation like that is to take you, the audience, basically from left to right, like mm -hmm. a story. So I'm going to start my story here, and then I'm going to I'm going to build the house over here, and I could probably do another part of the story over here. I was basically planning right, right here. John? I, I kind of know where you're going with that. I can see what you're leading at. That's sort of the vision. But I think it actually revealed his character instead of portraying his character. You said it portrayed his character because it actually revealed what his character was. Good point. Do you know what I mean? It's that's when no one was looking, when no one else was, he did everything else because there was a vested interest for himself his whole life. He always said he worked. But when no one was looking, when he thought there was nothing in it for him, he felt betrayed. What did he do? That revealed his character. He okay. didn't betray it, actually. So that's what I thought. The other point on that, who was the other, act, who was the other player in this was Mr. Johns. It okay. revealed his character, did it not? And I, I, I need to bring Mr. John's character. We had two characters yeah. come out. Yeah. I, for me, it was the same thing. If I go to a movie and I figured it out in five minutes, you lost me. And that's what happened in stories. Like, I mean, right where you were going, because you didn't set it up enough where I would believe a 50 year old character, quality driven guy would suddenly change. So there needs to be more motivation when you're so totally let down by how this guy releases again. Back and says, oh, but I got this so we're invested. We're, you know, maybe bringing up things occasionally as you're talking about him building his house. He thought of all the houses he built for this man and being gratitude to what he felt and how he released him. Why did his character change for this one house? I was not convinced. And so I didn't go into the story with you. And it is so powerful when you have those key. I forget the novel. You've got all these things. But, you know, how he has to do it. And then he hands in that key. And that key. It is a powerful moment. But you lost me before that because why would this have changed after 50 years? I wasn't convinced. You know, and that the, part needs to be brought well, up. Well, in the story, he was upset because of the $5,000. He thought that he deserved more. So I could flesh that but out. I just bring a little bit more into that where we're in the story with you. Yeah, here's what happened. Hell, I was. But then, then we're going to paint his character. We don't know. Yeah, but I have your dad. And I could build this character a little bit more. No, I wasn't talking about you. I was telling him that you paint the first character, which is the big guy, the guy with the money, the guy with the checkbook. But we don't know anything about him at all. So was he a pill to work for? Or was he really nice? And normally he was so giving that when he got the 5000 he was expected to. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't have a problem with the guy. Because I'm thinking, wow, he's been a, he's been a great guy. I've had my record. But he's stink. You know, well, he's like a good one. It has more time to transfer from the guy's side, the disappointment of what happened at the end, and then having his dream house, and then maybe working in at every point. You know, he went to buy the traffic in Thailand and thought, why? Look, I put 50 years in this guy, and he's shortchanging me. I'm just going to go with it. You know, kind of working in, but we could see I've been so true to this person on my own. What would change your character at that point? Because, yeah. because that's the powerful thing. It's like, why did it change his character? And I was trying to bring the conclusion to, and I got to the point, I thought, okay, we got the story told. We could right, probably stop the presentation right there. But I wanted to bring in, we've got a powerful tool right here for character, and that's where I dropped to the Ten Commandments. Oh, that was kind of the first thing that popped into my mind. Well, and Jesus was a carpenter. Huh? Jesus was a carpenter. Yeah, he was a carpenter. The rest of it's fantastic. There you go. Hey. Hey. The okay, there we go. Fantastic. 
good note. And then the last one, I'm just going to, and I don't want to take too much more time. The final thought was from Frank Outlaw to watch. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I that's think that, end of your bam, 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 kill it. Frank, this is just a technicality, but man, it really just threw me off. Uh, John Wooden is a basketball coach. That's what yeah. I thought, too. Yeah, I think that out. Did, did, you know that did I say basketball? He said baseball. But I think you know he's a basketball Oh, yeah. Coach. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I was a big okay. fan of John Wooden. Uh, yeah, it just yeah. messed me up, man. I'm like, no. Okay, and that's my, <laughs> my last time. point. I couldn't have done the speech in the, the, the quotes, were they appropriate? Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't have put the sports thing in your building. So that's just me. I would have, I mean, changed it and put a quote in there from Jesus because he's the, the best comforter we've ever had. What's interesting, and I'll, I'll, I'll close with this, and I appreciate your input on this, is that when I started to research this, I researched character quotes. 563 character quotes. And apparently, everybody understands how important character really is. The part of it is, do we live? Do we believe it? It's a part of it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'm going over an agenda to see if I need to call for a timer to report. We're both speakers in time. Perfect. All right, now it's time for our table topics. We haven't done these for a long, for a while. For a few weeks. Who is our table topic now? Yay, let's welcome Kelly up. Okay. Who we'll put the extra slide on the floor? I think it's a new year. <laughs> I think we should talk about New Year's resolutions. Now I know that a lot of people think that New Year's resolutions are meant to be broken. And I know some people do them and some people don't. So I would like to ask for a volunteer, or I'll call on someone. Your wife just volunteered you. <laughs> you don't, it, it's OK. You don't have to. You can come up or not. You give a you give a two minute speech on a on New Year's resolutions. Do you believe in them or not? Do you have one? And if not, why don't you have one? Thank you for the support. If you don't believe in it, you just get up here and say you don't believe in it. Moral uprightness? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can say one thing. One Res minutes. Res New Year's resolution is one thing I never worry about. I figured if you don't make one, you don't have to worry about breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and being a, a guy of rectitude, I don't even feel like I need to even worry about resolutions because I just live a perfect life, you know? <laughs> 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 it can be perfect in my definition. You know, so what is your definition of leading a perfect life? You look at it and you think about yourself, and you, each of us have a moral gauge, and it's going back to like what Frank was talking about. We each have an opportunity to make a choice. Each day we have choices, and we can choose to either do good or do some things that aren't so good. We can choose to do things that help others or do things that only helps ourselves at the expense of others. So that ends up being our choice. So a lot of times when we think about New Year's resolutions, a lot of people look at, well, I want to lose weight or I want to make more money this year. Or, and, yeah, you look at some of those types of things, but really what they need to look at is to say, okay, what is it I need to do differently to get a better result? Because it all comes back to us. It comes back to our choice that we make each and every day as we go through life. And the choices we make ends up creating our future. So if you want a better future, then you need to make better choices today. And so this gets back to the thing about rectitude or moral uprightness. I think, in some ways I look at it, I think people when they're born, 
they have the spirit has tendencies to do things. And some people, when they're born, they have these gifts and they have this natural tendency to just do what is the right thing to do. And there's other people, it seems like they have this feeling about them and they, they figure out some other way to get around the system. And they think, well, from by doing so or from taking from others, they're going to get ahead. But ultimately, they end up setting themselves up for failure down the road. Okay? Say thank you. Wow. Now we know why Andy came today. Why Andy didn't have a new member. Who's our next volunteer? Right on, Richard. Come on up, buddy. New Year's resolution is something that I've never done. Uh, not because I don't believe in them, just because I never have. You know, when you think of a resolution, resolution is essentially a goal. We all have goals, whether we actively say, this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to accomplish, and work towards that. Or we have things that we maybe desire, but not necessarily work day after day or think about working toward. Goals, resolutions, that are something that we can either make for ourselves or, in a lot of cases, people make them for us. For instance, in a, in a job, your boss may come to you and say, you know, you need to do these these things or you, know, you can't get the promotion or you're not going to work here anymore, whatever that case may be. And those are goals that your boss essentially told you, you need to do these things, you need to work towards this. Those are things that are set for you. So you can take the initiative and make those for you to improve yourself or not. Um, goals are... Like I say, I've never really set a goal and said, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to be, in six months I want to accomplish this. My goals have been more things I thought, oh, I'd like to do these things, or I'd like to get be here, accomplish these things, but not necessarily consciously work towards. When you set a goal, you write it down. People say you need to make smart goals. They, things that you can accomplish, you can measure. Um, when you make those goals, you write it down, it's a little bit more concrete. Okay? This is what I want to do, this is how I'm going to work towards it. And those goals can be uh, for your business, for your family, your, your spiritual life, whatever the case may be. And you should have gratitude with your goals. <laughs> I think we have time for one more. Come on up, Leslie. I'm doing this in rectitude for being late today. <laughs> Figure I need to be punished, right? Um, I think every year. I think we all make New Year's resolutions, even if we don't voice them. But I make resolutions every year, and I feel like I'm doing really well if I make about half of them. Okay. So there's one thing that I have on the list every year, every year, that never makes it. And I have said over and over that if there's one thing I could do that would change everything, it would be to get up earlier, go to bed earlier, get up earlier. What did Ben Franklin say? Early to bed, early to, bed, early to run, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? So my goal is to get up, um, doing some things differently this year, get up between 5 and 6 to start with, and then go uh, to 4 o'clock. So I want to start getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I want to write this year. and. That's the best time to do it for me. But 
I didn't start out very well because my husband got up yesterday morning and turned on the TV, which I call the soul sucker, and it was the Walking Dead. <laughs> and we sat there. I should say sat there. 12 hours. He turned it on at 10 in the morning, and I watched it. And actually longer than that because I watched it until about 11.30 last night. <laughs> so I did get a lot of things done in between, y'all, because I got my inspiration room put together. Every commercial I'd say, okay, let's go. And we'd run up the stairs and we'd put the room together. So the other good thing about that is I got my exercise at the same time. But I wanted to voice my goal because this goal to me is the most important thing that I could choose to do this year. The most important goal I could make is to get up early because it will change everything. I think I agree with everyone. I think even if you don't think you do New Year's resolutions, you probably still think about them. I like what you said, Andy, about how every day we have a choice. We get to make choices every day. I like that and, and the goal setting. You don't have to wait for a new year to set a goal and write it down and, and start working towards it. My wife asked me the other day if I had a New Year's resolution, and I had to think because i got so many things I've been writing down that I want to do next year. But I told my wife, because I think everything for me stems from this one thing. I, I told my wife, I said, next year, and really for the rest of my life, I want to love others more. I wanna, that's what I want to do. Anyways, do we want one more or are we done? We're done. Go ahead and call okay, the we're done. So I want to call for the report. Did everyone use the word rectitude? Uh, yes, and everyone was in time. And everyone was in time. Okay, so do we do the voting now? or Let's go ahead and do the voting. So we have Richard, Andy, and Leslie. Go ahead and vote for one of those. And Max is the vote counter. Normally do? Yeah. Anybody that opens their mouth is fair game here. That's my take on it. Sweet. Okay. All right. So Dave evaluated um, C speech on Egypt and digging up Cleopatra, which was fantastic. He'll come up and do that. So let me get this right. If I use the word rectitude, then I get to win the. Absolutely. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, that was that was a very enjoyable speech. And let me just for those, I got the actual paper here that Steve that Steve has. 
I don't know how many of you are really into VLF and and physics and stuff, but but the one of the questions is was the speech appropriate for the audience? And if you would have gone into the into the science of how the tomb or the potential tomb is located, we would have all been pretty much asleep. <laughs> so Steve took an interesting story about finding Cleopatra's tomb and, and emphasized that, which was I think of interest to all of us. I like the fact that you had the, the slides up here and that you were aware of us over here knowing that you were in the sight line, so you would move around and, and allow us to, to, to see the, the slides. I thought that was good. A lot of speakers don't have that awareness and you're constantly trying to crane and, and look around, so uh, thanks for that. And I liked the emphasis, again, on, on Cleopatra's tomb. He started off on, on the reasons. I like the organization. Why, why don't we know where it is or why it hasn't been found? And then you kind of explain the history of Egypt and how and how that worked in. You're using the uh, the laser pointer. You still were able to use gestures effectively, I thought, especially explaining Alexandria and, and, and describing the, the ancient part of Alexandria and the newer part of Alexandria. I liked the fact that you told us at the end of, of, of where this is going, there's a potential tomb. I thought you might have made that more interesting in that you know, what we found in Tutankhamun's tomb and what we potentially could find in Cleopatra's tomb and you know, kind of used a, who was that? Geraldo Rivera, when he did the Chicago thing, where they opened the vault. Yeah. And really, really made that, and you know, even if there's nothing there, you're just, you pay money to see this thing. <laughs> And, and I know that, being a little bit cynical, I wonder if some of the people wanting to raise money for this dig would use Cleopatra as as kind of that, that you know, boy, you got to get money for this because this could be Cleopatra's tomb. But I know that there are people of, of rectitude, moral rectitude, they wouldn't do that sort of thing. But really enjoyed the speech. It was very informative. Maybe you could have made a little bit more of a story, like I say, like kind of the role of ish, but. But very good, very well done. Enjoyed it. I have to agree. I'm blown away. I think that I study in interesting and strange things that most people don't care about. And then you come and you bring stuff I haven't even heard about. So there's a lot to learn on this planet. And it's nice to have interesting things brought up for us to kind of gauge where we're at on things. Um, Without the printed agenda, I don't really know who I announced. Do I just turn it back to you to turn on the... So we would call for the reports. Uh, the reports. Okay. From Marion, on master, <coughs> Okay. Vicki, and I just have to say at 7 a.m., woman, oh. I think I need a power drink. Coffee oh. is not doing it. I like to... Your... Okay. So I did a good Marion. It's so good. Should I stand here and do it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, gotta make sure I, I thought this was brilliant. Yeah, I'm going to rectitude myself right here. Okay. All right. And I didn't do every single person, but okay. Starting with Scott, I mean Steve. Oh, fine. The only I only caught. Well, Scott was getting. I just caught two little things. One, you said, the reasons that are cited for that is that, instead of our, okay? <laughs> and then, you know that little commercial on the radio where the kids are advertising for their challenger preschool and the parents are, how do you know this and that? And the kids say, um, farther is something you can measure, further is something you can't. And then Steve, you said, and if you go further down, and really probably farther down because you can measure that. But then you said, and then you said further, when I mean, you might have said longer, but, and it may for some time further, and that's probably okay because you can't measure it, but I might have said for some time to come or something. Anyway, that's just that. So was that good or what? Okay. Now, Frank, where are you? I caught you. You used an adverb instead of an adjective. 
Hey, it would be okay to say. He does it all the time. It would be okay to say. More time. importantly, character is, or more important, character is. But you said more importantly about character is. Ooh. Not more importantly about. So anyway, and <laughs> and if you didn't catch your one little deal, I'll say that. But, and then, Dave, you did, where are you? You did my favorite thing that I like to, like to pretend I know it all. Okay, you never wish you would have, or you never, if you would have. Well, if you would have gone. You say, if he had, if he had gone, not if he would have, or so that's it. But mainly with wish. Don't I don't want to ever hear anyone say, I wish I would have. No, I wish I had. He. If only this, then I would have, but I didn't. Okay, that's it. That's my grandma. <laughs> I never thought I would live to see anyone who loved that job, but we have found her. <laughs> All right, to give me the uh, report. Okay, I'm going to sit down. Okay. Go, Jess. Um, the Jessica Jones Award goes to Jessica Jones for her Rectitude. <laughs> 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 
That's what he said. Oh, yeah. What did Abraham Lincoln say? No, that was your, your character is a tree. No, you are the tree and your character is the shine. Your character is like a tree, your shadow is like the reputation. Got it. Oh, I thought you said I have to take that penny back. Yeah. Is John Wooden a baseball coach or a basketball coach? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good off too, by the way. Yeah. What's the name of the last, uh, uh, the author of the last quote that he, Al Hoffman? Right. Frank Alpha Who is your cousin? I'm your cousin. Great. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, no agenda. I'm completely lost, so I'll just say Thanks. our group, huh? We need to call for the evaluator vote and the speaker votes. Yeah. Call for those uh, Get all numbers. your votes over to Max. Yeah, we need the speaker votes. We've only got part of it. So everybody right now. Please take a moment to vote. And I just want to say, to start the new year, we're a fabulous club, of course. And I love how everybody rises to the occasion. Whatever needs to happen, happens. Done right. And uh, it was a great start to the new year. Look forward to getting everybody back in. I'm concerned about some people that we haven't seen for a while. If you know them personally or on a deeper level than I do as a newbie, uh, Maybe reach out and see if everything's okay. I know that I've gotten calls when I haven't shown up, and it's like cheers, you know, having a bar where everybody knows where you are and wonders if you're dead or alive. It's kind of nice. So if you've got somebody that's been missing for a while, if you can reach out to them and see that everything's okay, if there's something as a club we need to do in character with this club, I just want to say thank you. It's great having all of you in my life. And I appreciate the growth that this club instills. And I'm going to turn it back over to our Toastmaster. Yep. So I am fortunate enough to be Toastmaster and presiding officer, so I get the next, say, 10 minutes, 8 minutes. Who hasn't voted? We've never got a nine votes. So votes? I haven't voted. That's not Pass the votes over. So I, oh, I have a personal favor to ask Leslie. Will you please take your lovely quote, Early to Rise, and put it on our Toastmaster website? On our Facebook or Toastmaster, or on our Facebook, that would be awesome. And uh, Frank, have you figured out how to get to Facebook? Because I know that Max won't go there. Do you? Can you get to Facebook? Oh, no. All right, I am going to call on, will you take his quote, the one that he used at the bottom of his speech, and actually put it on our Facebook account? We don't have a Facebook wow. account. Does anybody want to take this yeah. assignment? Please. Do Google do it. Will you please take that quote and put it on our Facebook account? Yeah. All right. And just say, you know, Frank gave a great speech, and here's the, the ending of his. Here. Seriously? Look at Kelly and Mr. Technology. Great. So one of the things that we talked about at our last meeting and at our officers' meeting was making the meeting go on time. And I know that Max a sergeant in arms for an entire year has begged and pleaded for this meeting to start on time and most and on most days to end on time and I made a goal to make it end on time so I'm watching the clock was watching my board was watching that and so I'm asking for help for everyone to make us end on time so that a social gathering can then happen afterwards so that we can get to know each other better but the meeting should end exactly at 815. 815. Oh, are you sure? Not 810? 815. Perfect. All right. Let's do something fun then. Are we ready to call for the awards? All right. Yeah, perfect. Is everybody voted? Everybody voted? Okay. All right. Let's do a drum roll for best evaluator. Okay, let's do best table topic. Ready? Andy.
And I'm sorry that our group likes fun instead of information. It's a great job. It was separated by one vote, too, by the way. That was oh, one one that on one. All right, great. Frank, you look like you want to come up and say something. Am I misreading you? Do you have something to say to the club today? Oh, I just had a thought. Oh, we'll to a little bit this is where I'm supposed to call for an educational moment. Would you like to take that spot? Yes. It's really weird. I, I guess I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to this club, because that was her job, and I was already rolling in the Toastmaster. I was going to do the whole meeting. Sure. And I, I echo what Jack said. I love this club, and it's such a phenomenal club. You know, you probably heard that out of what was a 90 some odd clubs in our district, there's only five of us that, that distinguished president club, and we probably the only one on the planet that's ever done it the first year. And we were sitting with James Dabney, who's a big muckamuck in this organization, and he was just going, how did you guys do it? It's, it's you guys. It's this group. And that lady right there is going to take us to distinguished president again, and as well, are you going to do the triple hitter, right? I'm I've got one down and I've got two more going. And that's going to take every one of us to be a part of doing our speeches, getting them up there on that tally board up there, mm -hmm. participating. That includes your leadership and your speaking part of it. I'm going to announce that I'm going to be, or I'm going to run for area governor <laughs> this year, and that's going to help us get back over the edge for another accomplishment for this organization. I'm right behind you the following. Yep. Got it. I want you guys to really be thinking about what I mentioned that earlier. When you guys are thinking about roles and taking on leadership opportunities, start studying the opportunity you'd like to have because if you really, really, really want to take one of these roles on, like VP of Education or membership, and it, it takes it takes a little bit of work, but it makes you practice some of the skills that you use in your everyday life, and you bring them into this club, and it helps this club grow. That's why we've really been so successful. I'd like to mention the fact also, too, that the Timpanoga Storytelling Conference is coming up next month, I believe. February? I think it is February. I keep going back to storytelling. It's, yeah, there's one in the spring, uh, winter and one in the fall. But those conferences, their workshops, they are a blast. They are worth every nickel that you're going to spend. And I'll, as soon as I get my hands on that information, I'll shoot it back. But it's down in Orem. It's uh, BYU, and it is just uh, actually two days, if you wish, of really getting down on how to tell a story. And storytelling to me is where you make great speakers. Tana mentioned about the hologram type thing where I'm going to take the story and I'm actually going to bring it out and start flushing it out to where you can see it in, in 3D. That's the kind of techniques that you'll learn at these conferences, how to put a story together. And when you really learn how to tell great stories, public speaking really becomes a kick in the pants. It's a lot of fun. It's not that scary moment anymore. And people will listen to you a lot more. So just got used to all that little bit of time. So that's my little blurb for the day. And you guys, oh, one thing else I want to mention. I just, and you got the email, I believe, that there's an engineering company that wants to bring four to five people into this club, and they're going to be here probably the next two or three weeks. So we're going to be having, I think the club's going to really grow out a lot. So when you see new members come in, put your arms around them, make them feel comfortable, which you guys always do. I mean, that's that's the warmth of this club. So uh, you see a lot of these new faces, but I got a feeling we're going to grow exponentially here real quick. So, yes, Jude. I have a question. In November, I think Max can do it now. Get this. Max can do it. Yeah, get those manuals, the leadership manuals, the speaking manuals. Uh, get those signed, and let's let's get all of our accomplishments signed up for. And, and I think VP of Education is responsible for making sure that we sign all that off. Yes, and, and now it's his turn to talk. Now it's yes, your turn to talk. Yep. Yay. Yay.
I've had all the folks over here, everybody that spoke today, that did a, did a speech. What? You did a speech today. Get your, get a transcript. You put the date down, put which speech it was. If you're in the conflict uh, communicator manual, the first one. This is, this is the uh, chart for you. Get, so put it in there. This is the advanced communicator chart. So I've, I've got my name on here. I've completed five speeches in the advanced communicator manual. I've got one more to do to get enough to get, be one of those people that advances another uh, achievement. Yeah, I got your deal submitted. Well, that's got mine. I, got, I don't have yours because. Yeah, and she, and she, she, when she moved, I think she misplaced it. So we're going to have to wait for Sue to surface. Or do you have her phone number? I have her phone number. Okay. Call her. Okay, call her. But Leslie, time out. We have extra manuals for students. Not only that, but the manuals are online until semesters. So even if you yeah. have to take them, yeah, they won't give it to you free unless you unless you submit to. Yes, yeah, so we have them, yeah. and we could copy one that she could fill out. Well, we have the regular. Yeah. We don't have that. Many I do. That's the best manual. Yeah. Okay. Well, now okay, so so then we have some competent leadership, you guys, and. And you need to get those checked off as well. So anybody that did grammarian or did uh, a general evaluator, any of those things are, are in the top communicator. You need to put those on here. So I want you to come up before you leave today. Okay, so by a raise of hands, how many are going after their competent communicator right now? One. You're done. You're done. Comp communicator two. You have your book? Oh, my book. Okay. Does somebody so, last year cannot be put on for this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what about confident leaders? Do you know the little tasks that everybody did today? I'm going to buy silver. All right. So are you marking them down in your books? Everyone? Everyone? Yeah. All right. Next meeting, let's bring our books. Let's just try it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, bring your books. I mean, you need to just just get your get you a, uh, a binder or something that's for Toastmasters and put your books in it. All the books that I've that we've done are in this folder. Keep them with you. Just bring that for your Toastmasters meeting. But everybody who had a role, please stop by and see Max on your way out because he's going to put it on our board. You have to remember that this isn't just for you individually, it's actually for the club. Yes. And the more of us that make our goals. For this, so we can check off the distinguished club yes. all the time. So we need your work to count. You're already doing it, so please let us count it. Yes, sir. Can we get me signed up then? Yes. Did you pay your dues? I've worked something out with uh, yeah. Perfect. Scott, and, but I just, we haven't been forward. Okay. I'm not a member. And on the way, on the way to Mass, would everyone stop at the marshmallow station and stick some homemade marshmallows in a baggie and take them home to the kids with the marshmallows? Homemade marshmallows. Marshmallows. Yeah. Oh, that's it. We're done. Wait, wait. Oh, where's the gavel? Right there on the floor. Yeah. Ready? Ten seconds late.